Hello there and welcome to number four in the lymphedema DIY series. This is dealing with leg lymphedema. I am presuming you have already seen my lymphedema DIY number one and two. It's really important that you watch those first. Um, they will give you a background on the lymphatic system and how it works. And then the second video will actually show you how to work your deep lymphatics. Now, if you have leg lymphedema and you've never had cancer treatments um, or surgery and you have it in both legs, um, then you may well have primary lymphedema and working the deep lymphatics should actually do a lot for you. Um, this video is actually for people who have single leg lymphedema in one leg. Now, if you have um, lymphedema in both legs and you have had cancer treatment, then you really do need to go and be assessed by a lymphedema therapist. I'm sure you're doing that anyway, but it's really important that you do that because things can be a little bit more complex. That's not to say they can't be treated, but they are more complex if you have two legs involved and you have had cancer. So do, um, do consult your lymphedema therapist about that. So before we start, you'll notice that I am wearing clothing. It's much better if you do this without clothing or with minimal clothing. The reason being when we're actually massaging the surface of the skin, we want to use a little bit of friction in our skin massage and you can't really get an effective light friction when you're, you're working through clothing. So while we can massage the deep lymphatics better through clothing because we're working deep, the skin massage is much lighter and really does need skin on skin contact. So just so I can be clear about that before we start about that. But anyway, let's just talk about a simple one leg lymphedema after having surgery, most likely for cancer, um, not exclusively, but most likely, and, and maybe radiotherapy to the groin as well. Um, so people often have, you know, one leg swollen. So what we're going to presume is that the other leg is a normal size and the rest of your body isn't particularly swollen either. So this is going to teach you how to work the surface lymphatics. So because you've already watched my lymphedema video one and two, hopefully you already have started working on your deep lymphatics and maybe about three times a week that you're actually doing a program just for the deep lymphatics on their own, okay? So when we go to actually massaging the leg, what we now have to decide, and your lymphedema therapist may have guided you towards making this decision, which nodes are we going to ask to take the extra fluid from our legs and process it? So the nodes in our groin, which normally do the work, well, they're gone from the equation. So we can either bring fluid towards the other groin, groin on the other side, we can bring it up into the trunk, both coming up the front and also up the back of our bum, into our back there, and some of that will be reabsorbed. And also we need, we, we also have the option of the armpit um, on the same side is probably the nearest, but there's nothing wrong with the other side as well. But, and also the neck nodes. But really the, the, the most common ones to use are the armpits on the same side or the groin on the other side because they're where your nodes are very much collected. Um, so those are the routes that we generally want to take. So we're going to use our skin lymphatics. So we've talked about the deep lymphatics in the previous videos. These are the skin lymphatics. So we have an entire body covered in skin, we hope. And our, our, we have a lymphatic system attached to that. So if you have had, for example, experience of having swelling in any area of your body, for example, your hand, you've injured it, it's swollen, um, you'll probably have had the experience of being able to massage that and massaging it upwards and actually moving the swelling along the skin. So that's exactly what we're going to get the lymphatics um, in our the skin of our leg to do. We're going to get it to move along the skin lymphatics until we can get it to a point where it can access the deep lymphatics. So bearing in mind that this is my left groin, I'm going to just maybe work two roots, which is going to be towards my right groin. 
on my left armpit, but let's start with the right groin. So basically what you want to do is you want to work the, the skin, when I say work the skin, massage the skin, prepare the area between your leg and the lymph nodes on the other side, we want to actually make sure that the root along that skin is good. Now, you can't go um, through any scars, so you might have to go above the scars or you might have to go below the scars, but trying to massage um, just lightly, skin massage is really light, um, lightly towards the other groin nodes. Okay. Like that. Now, if you haven't actually, um, presuming you're working on your deep lymphatics in general, and today you actually haven't done any work on your deep lymphatics, spend a few areas doing deep lymphatic massage on the lymph nodes that you're going to be shifting the fluid to. So in this case, my armpit, maybe a bit on my neck, and also my groin nodes on the other side. So spend a little bit on the deep lymphatics first of all, and then you're going to um, work the superficial lymphatics, the skin lymphatics. So I'm just preparing the way, okay? So the next thing I want to do is prepare the way from my kind of, the top of my leg here up towards my armpit, okay? So often what people do is they start about halfway up and they just start massaging up towards the armpit like that. Make sure the skin has no thickening. If it has thickening, you just rub it until things kind of unthicken, okay? When I say thicken, it's because when when you've had kind of long-term um, oedema, sometimes the skin gets kind of doughy and thickened. Just from overworking, the lymphatics in the skin can get overloaded. And a pure sign of that is when there's there's kind of thickness in the skin. So anyway, you're going to be working from that area there and then go a little bit lower and massage from the top of your leg. Top of your leg and actually from your bum, okay? So mostly we're going to be moving fluid out towards the outside of our leg in order to shift it up into the trunk, okay? So that whole area, kind of at the front of our trunk going towards our armpit, at the side of our trunk going towards our armpit, and kind of at the back of our trunk going up towards our armpit. Spend a few minutes massaging that area. That is your route, that is your, your exit route for the fluid, that's the excess fluid in your leg. Okay, so we have prepared our exit routes. You've done a little bit of deep lymphatic work in your armpit hopefully a little bit in your neck as well, and in your other groin. Then you've prepared the skin. <clears throat> prepared the skin, and now we're ready for the leg. Okay, so what you do is you pick the, the top quarter of your leg and you work with that and you're just going to massage upwards. It's always upwards, but you take the first section first of all. Don't massage into your groin. Kind of bring it upwards and then out over your bum. So basically you're kind of going from inside and then going out and up the side there because that is our exit route. Our, the skin of our, our buttock really is going to be the main exit route. There we go, and bring it up and out. Bring it up to my trunk, and then maybe bring it up towards the armpit. Okay. Or you can bring it out, up to the trunk, and then across towards the other coin. Okay. So across towards the other groin. So you have two choices, okay? So the top quarter of our leg, and don't forget the underneath part, under here, okay? Easily forgotten. <coughs> so maybe putting your leg up on a chair like I'm doing, 
is a great way of getting the, 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 the thigh area. When you're getting below the knee, you probably have to stretch out the leg a bit more. Okay, so I'm bringing any swelling from the inside of the thigh, I'm bringing it to the outside and then up over the buttock. Okay, any swelling from the back, and actually you're going to do it even if there isn't any visible swelling, you're actually going to bring that up along the buttock towards the back. So the back of the thigh goes up over the buttock and then once it's in the trunk you have the choice of bringing it up towards your armpit or across the trunk towards the other groin. We've done the top quarter. Now come down as far as the knee and again particularly on the inside of the knee above the crease of the knee that's an area that often gets quite thickened um, just because it's a natural point for, for swelling to to be stopped by the crease of the knee because your, your skin is quite tight, tightly bound to the underneath structures at that point. <clears throat> so we're going to pick the lower half of our thigh and again not going to bring it up towards the groin because my, my lymph nodes are gone in my groin so I'm going to bring it out, out and up, out and up. And again, the same route that we did before, out to the outside and then up the side, out to the outside and then up the side. And at the back of my thigh, I am also just massaging up into the buttock and out and then up into the trunk, following it up again into the armpit or else over across the trunk. Sometimes you might find you to spend a little bit longer in that area that's a bit thickened. That's okay. All right, but remember, it's keep going light. It's a very light massage. Uh, it's so light you might think, ah, oh, this won't work. But actually, it is more effective when you go lighter than if you go heavier. Because if you go heavier, you're going to be accessing kind of the muscles more, and you'll be doing a muscle massage and not a skin massage. Now we have come to below our knee. And again, pick the top half of your shin, top half of your shin, and then you're going to be massaging. Now, if you massage up towards your kneecap, swelling finds it hard to go past kneecap because again, the skin is quite adherent around there. So what you want to do is you want to bring it out to the outside of your kneecap. And that's actually the route. And actually, I usually spend a couple of minutes just on that area first of all because it's like the junction point it's kind of like the root from your lower leg into your upper leg so that kind of I suppose it's the side of your knee the outside of your knee between your kneecap and your knee crease spend a few minutes there because that is going to be where we bring a lot of our shin our lower leg swelling so here we go. I'm going to start into the lower chin and even the back of the leg. You can kind of bring that. Now, the reason we don't bring it directly into the knee crease area there is it kind of tends to lodge there and not move any further. So you want to move it out, out to the side, or you want to bring it across and coming up this way here. Okay, but not directly into the knee crease. So that's the way we're going to go. For me, I like bringing it out to the side. I'm going to bring it out to the side. But as I said, you can bring it up the inside of the knee as well. But remember, once you get to there, not to bring it straight up into the groin, but bring it out wide. And then up that way there. And then you're going to pick the lower part of <coughs> Of your shin and going down into the, the foot and I'm just going to change the camera angle a little bit so you can see me a bit better for this one at least you can see my foot so yeah again with the foot and um, you want to get the swelling out of your foot and what you'll find is often the area around you know your ankle bones there your medial malleolus 
and you're left in the nails. A lot, a lot of the time, fluid actually kind of there's pockets of fluid there that can get quite thick. So you might want to spend a little bit of time working on those areas on their own. Sometimes I do this, working like that, and then bringing it up towards the upper part of my chin. Once it gets there. Again, I'm going to bring it out wide and bring it up to my thigh and bring it out the top of my leg. So you can spend a little bit of time just on local areas and then on your toes. And like with the toes, if they're very swollen, what you want to do, and I'll show you with my finger. It's hard for me to show you with my toe, but you want to get the toe and you want to kind of massage it on either side like that. Not trying to force the swelling down the middle, but out either side is really, really a much better way. So you can work on those there. Okay. And again, just manipulating whatever way you can. Swelling can come up this way. Swelling can come out behind there trying to get the swelling to move. It tends to move better if you bring it behind the ankle bones. So any swelling in the dorsum of your foot, this part here, you can just bring that behind the ankle bone or behind the ankle bone and the other. And then once it's there, as I said, you can massage as you were taught a minute ago for the upper part of the shin and then you're bringing it out and up over there and up towards your armpit. So after you've all your deep lymphatics done and you've prepared the skin for your exit route, that massage of your leg would probably take you 15 or 20 minutes. So that is the method for massaging um, lymphedema in your leg. And I hope that was helpful to you. In an ideal world, we would, those of us with lymphedema would be doing a regime every single day. Um, so do, do what you can. And maybe with the help of these videos and your own lymphedema therapist, you will actually work out the best regime for you. Um, anything that isn't helpful, don't continue it. Make sure you go back to your own lymphedema therapist and get individual advice. So thank you very much for listening and take care.